Hello everybody and welcome back to The Second Shelf. It's that time of year again, um, the Man Booker Prize. The long list has been announced um, yesterday, Tuesday, or at least it should have been, but obviously some nitwit at The Guardian doesn't really know what the concept embargo means. But anyway, the long list has been announced and as always, um, I make a video to give my two cents, you know, on the long list. And as always, also, I'm not going to give you a rundown of all the long-listed books. Um, I will list them down below with links to Goodreads. And I will also list um, other booktubers, Eric from Lonesome Reader, uh, Peg from, what is it, Reading and Knitting on the Porch at the moment, <laughs> I think her channel is called, um, Sa Simon from Savage Reads and Steve, uh, Steve Donahue. They all talk about, you know, the individual books. And if you want to have the shortest and penultimate rundown of the Men Booker long list, you have to watch Adam at Memento Mori. Links to all these videos down below. What I will do is, like I do each year, I will look at the list and give more general remarks. Before I start with my remarks, just some basic ground rules uh, for those of you who might not be that familiar with the Man Booker Prize, which is completely fine because not everybody follows prizes. Um, the Man Booker is given to a novel written in English and published in the UK or in Ireland, that's new since this year, between um, the 1st of October 2017, so last year, and 30th of September this year. Um, my first remark is the same remark I give every year, and I will do so until the end of time, until they change the rule, um, and that is that... If we want to discuss the long list properly, if we want to discuss whether we feel, you know, the books on the long list deserve to be on the long list, we need to know the books that have been submitted. Um, this year we know that 171 books have been submitted, the largest number ever. Um, and there are rules for publishers how many books they can submit. It's not that publishers can just submit any novel they have published in the UK or Ireland between, uh, you know, uh, October and end of September. Um, if you have no, never been longlisted, if you have never had a novel that had been longlisted, you can submit one novel. If you had previous uh, longlists, one or two, you can submit two novels and so on and so forth. If you want to check out, you can look at the rules um, uh, to see, uh, you know, the, the submission standards. So in other words... Publishers are constricted in how many novels um, they can submit. And if we want to really discuss whether we are satisfied with the judges' choices for the long list, we should need, we would need the uh, a list of the submitted books. I have no idea, and I've been saying that for years, why the, there is no publication of the submissions. Uh, we have a similar prize in Holland uh, for the best you know, novel written in Dutch in a certain year, and they just publish every book that has been submitted. I mean, it's not that much work, and I don't think it's a secret, uh, or at least it shouldn't be. So that's the first remark, like I said, which I make every year, uh, and which I will continue making until the Man Booker publishes a list with the submitted novels. My second remark is also not something new just for this year. I've been saying that also for a very long time. I'm repeating myself. That's what you get when you get old. You start repeating yourself all the time. Um, but that is that um, the choices for the long list, the short list and the winner very much reflects the literary taste of the judges. Um, so even though I, I love book prizes, I follow the Man Booker and the Pulitzer and the Stella and the, the Baileys or former Baileys, now the Women's Prize for Fiction, I take the claim of these prizes that they award the prize to the best book with much more than just a grain of salt. Because in my opinion, um, the taste of the judges is prominent in their choices. Um, and even though I would say there are, you know, objective standards for criticizing or judging or evaluating a book, you just have to look um, at book critics when they talk about a book, professional book critics, how much they differ. 
you can have the same book uh, and somebody is really lyrical about the writing and another professional critic will say the writing is overdone or there are too many metaphors or uh, whatever. So in other words, even in with people who are who do nothing else than professionally review and judge books, you will have difference in opinion about the quality of a work. And that won't be any different when you have a panel of five judges. So let's look at the, the long list and, you know, have a look at the judges as well. The first thing uh, people noticed uh, when the list was published uh, was that there are not that many, quote-unquote, big names on the list. You have uh, Richard Powers with Overstory, you have Michael Ondaatje with his new uh, novel Warlight, and you have Rachel Kushner with The Mars Room. Uh, but many big names are not on the list. Ali Smith, for instance, you know, to repeat that name over and over again. Um, and I know, I said it before, we don't know whether any of the other big names have been submitted. So we cannot really say whether or not the judges chose only those three or whether there were more. Um, the second thing that people noticed is that for the first time genre fiction was included. Uh, uh, Belinda Bauer's Snap is a thriller um, and that there is a graphic novel on the list. Now let's look at the judges. First of all the three big names because those are the books uh, many people have been talking about. As for me I can safely say from those picks that the judge pen, the, the panel of the judges and I don't agree uh, on you know what is a good book. Uh, all three big names are authors with books that don't gel with me at all. Uh, I think Rachel Kushner is books are overrated, they are not well written, the story is a mess. I thought overstory, I DNF'd overstory because I thought it was gimmicky and silly. Um, and Michael Ondaatje, yeah, I'm sorry, I, I, I can't, I just can't deal with his artsy kind of structure. Uh, so that tells me something uh, about the judges. Um, and the same thing goes for the fact that a graphic novel is included and a crime fiction, because you have Leanne Shepton, one of the uh, judges, a young writer, and she writes graphic novels. And you have Val McDermott, a very famous Irish writer. She writes exclusively crime and thriller, and the thriller is on the long list. Yeah, and as for the chair, I want to, in a side note, uh, that is a philosopher this time, and that is uh, Kwame Anthony Appiah, um, born in London, his father is from Ghana, but he worked in the U.S., uh, teaches there. Uh, and I had a sort of intellectual crush long, long time ago when I first came across his, his name. Uh, I thought it sounded interesting what he does, you know, anti-establishment a little bit and so. And then I met him, or not met him in the, in the sense that we had a long talk, but at a conference and I thought he was pompous and snobby. Uh, and pretentious, and then I read some of his work, and I thought it was uninteresting and not very smart and not groundbreaking philosophy in any sense. Um, so that also tells me something. And oh yeah, he writes crime novels about you know a very highbrow aristocratic um, inspector, um, and I think they're horrible. <laughs> but anyway. The next thing I think is notable on the long list that from the Man Book a Dozen, which means 13 books, are four debut novels. Uh, you have In a Mad and Furious City, you have The Water Cure, you have Everything Under, um, and The Long Take. Um, and as much as I love debuts, and you know, last year there was also a, a debut included, two debuts included on the long list, Elmet and The History of Wolves, and I love both books, and I was very happy that they were on the long list because it gives them, you know, attention, and the same goes for the four books on this year's long list, uh, but I'm still, you know, doubtful whether it's a good idea, um, uh, because I think uh, they are debut prizes not for nothing. If you are a young author or an older author, it doesn't matter, when, when you write your first book, uh, you should be allowed to make mistakes. 
Um, writing is also a craft. Uh, it's not that you wake up one day and you are just brilliant, or at least, you know, some authors are, but they are the exception. Other authors have to practice in order to get better and better. And a debut should be judged uh, within, you know, the, the, the confines, the structure, or the, the, the limitations of a debut. You should have in mind, if when you judge a debut, that it's a first book, and you would allow this author to make certain mistakes. Um, so I don't know whether it's a good idea to include debuts on a, a long list like this, but like I said, it's I'm not sure about it. It's just something I think about. Uh, let me know what what you think. Speaking of how to judge a debut, that brings me to another point, almost my last point. Yeah, uh, and that is when you have a long list and you have to come to the shortlist and then to the winner. What you have to do is compare books. Obviously, one book is better in your opinion as a judge than the other. Um, and I said already that I think with debuts, that's unfair because, of course, the majority of debut novels will be not better than a book from a writer who has 10 years of experience. So it's a bit unfair that the debut loses. Um, but the same goes uh, for things like graphic novels or genre fiction. Um, uh, the, the graphic novel, Sabrina, um, I didn't like the artwork, so I didn't read it. Um, but, of course, the writing in a graphic novel is completely different. So it, I think it's very difficult to compare with, let's say, um, a, a, a novel that is, you know, like Milkman, the novel by Anna Burns, which is this, uh, the story of uh, a young girl, a young woman, 18 years old, in during the 1970s and 1970s, during the Troubles, uh, the conflict in Northern Ireland. And much of the book, uh, I've just finished it, is about the writing. So I think it's hard to compare. Uh, for genre fiction, that's even more. Um, because uh, if you look at good genre fiction, um, and I'm, I will read Snap by Belinda Bauer because I love genre fiction and I love thrillers, but they are constricted within the genre. You, the readers have certain expectations, and rightfully so, when they read genre fiction, like a thriller. Um, and I don't know whether it's that easy to compare a genre fiction when you say, yeah, but it's, you know, it didn't explore this, or it wasn't that inventive, and then your argument would be, yeah, but that's a thriller, and that's how a thriller has to be written. Uh, comparing it again to Anna Burns' Milkman. So even though I think it's it might be, you know, a, a signal from the judges that they are very anti-establishment, only three big names, and we include stuff like genre fiction or dystopian sci-fi like The Water Cure, we have four debuts and we have a graphic novel. I don't know whether it makes the comparison easier. I think it makes it more difficult. And, and that is the last remark, something's got to give. And what I mean by that is um, the price the man Booker has sort of opened uh, the, the, the range of novels that it has accepted over the years. First, of it was only uh, novels from the Commonwealth. Then uh, they included now American fiction if it's published in the UK. Now, like I said, in 2018, published in the UK or Ireland. Uh, this year's panel includes genre fiction and graphic novels. But you only have 13 books, uh, 13 spots on the long list, so something has to give. And for me this year, it was obviously uh, fiction from countries like Australia, India, um, uh, uh, you know, African uh, countries that publish in English and are published in the UK, Kenya, Ghana. Um, there are two Canadian authors, there are two Irish uh, books, which reflects, you know, the opening up to Irish publishers. 
um, there's uh, the main books are from the UK and then there you have the US but there's nothing from Australia nothing from India nothing from Kenya um, nothing from Asia at all um, and I think that reflects obviously the choice uh, we want to include genre fiction we want to include debuts we want to include a graphic novel so we just skip you know other areas I think that that wouldn't be my choice but I'm not a judge and uh, if you have 171 submissions and you have uh, 13 spots something has to give always the question for me is more what is it that has to give if you have a book prize like the man booker I don't know what is better what I do know is that what happens with the prize as you can see from this overly long video is that people discuss books and that's a good thing isn't that a very positive note to end my ramblings anyway thank you very much for watching i hope you've enjoyed the video let me know your thoughts on the man booker prize and i'll talk to you all soon in my next video bye bye